Ever since I got involved in film again, and by involved I mean I'm not committed to film, but I'm willing to flirt with it a little bit, uh, one question that I've been seeing asked a lot in various online forums by various newcomers to film is, how can I scan a whole lot of negatives in a real hurry? Usually these people are total noobs who have been left 5,000 rolls of black and white negatives by their great aunt Agatha, and they want to scan them in a hurry to see if they can make her into the next Vivian Meyer and cash in on her fame so that they can give up their day jobs as Twitch streamers or whatever the heck it is that they do. For most people that isn't really realistically going to happen. That's just an awful lot of film to scan in a lifetime. Still, it's very handy to have a quick, consistent, and repeatable process for scanning your black and white negative films. So I thought I'd uh, take a few minutes and show you the system that I'm using now, which seems to be working pretty well for me. The key to this is a piece of vintage darkroom equipment called a Bessler Negatrans negative carrier. The uh, Charles Bessler company made these for many years for their line of uh, 23C and uh, 45M enlargers, and they were very popular with custom labs that had to do high volume printing because uh, this type of carrier would let you handle 35 millimeter film in strips and move them through the enlarger very quickly by turning this finger wheel on one end. I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not, but turning the wheel moved a rubber cord on either side that advanced the film through the carrier while holding it reasonably flat. I've uh, modded my Negatrans in a couple of ways. One thing I did was to uh, glue these rubber spacers on the bottom of it. And the reason I did that is that most of the Negatrans carriers you'll find have this uh, cable attachment on one end so that you could use a cable drive to advance the film. Um, because of the height of that, it keeps you from setting the uh, carrier down on a light box or something like that. The other thing I did was to hot glue a filter ring onto the top surface so that I can uh, attach the rest of my setup to it consistently and repeatably, and I'll show you how that works. Uh, for a light source, I use one of these little LED panels like a lot of other people use. Because of the rubber feet, I can set my Negatrans right on top of that. I'll turn it on so that you can see it light up. And the next thing that I add is a mirrorless camera with a normal macro lens. Now, if you made the mistake of paying attention to wildlife photography bloggers and bought a super long macro lens, you'll find it doesn't work very well for this type of uh, negative duplication because you have to have the lens too far from the setup. But a normal focal length macro lens works really well. The way that I position my macro lens is that I measured about how far the front of the lens needs to be from the film to get a full frame scan. And then I got onto uh, Amazon and bought a lens hood that was the right length so that all I have to do is attach the hood. I also added a couple of uh, filter spacer rings to fine tune the length. And that's why I glued one of them on here. Once I have my lens hood mounted, I can screw the whole apparatus onto the Negatrans. I'll uh, fold the monitor out so you can see what we're seeing through the Negatrans. And I'll turn the camera on and you can see that it's basically lined up and ready to go. Now one key to being able to get good scans quickly is to start off with a clean piece of film. And the process I've been using is going to horrify any of you purists in the audience. I'll show it to you anyway because it's been working pretty well for me. I take a nice clean microfiber towel, I take my strip of film, I take another microfiber towel and put it on top, press it down with moderate firmness, and just pull the film through. It does as good a job as anything of getting it reasonably clean and ready to scan, and that's what we're going to do now. To load my strip of film into the Negatrans, I just start it into the gate on one end, and as I turn the finger wheel, you can see that it is pulling the film through, and I'll make sure that I've got my film lined up on my first good frame, which is, there it is right there. Now if you don't trust your camera's autofocus, you can use manual focusing to zero in on the grain structure of the film to make sure that everything is going to be ideally sharp. Or you can just let uh, autofocus usually do the job. And I like to set my exposures manually, and to do that, I just try to get my uh, histogram centered more or less within the overall range. So I will put my histogram here so it's right in the middle. 
Now I'm uh, ready to start scanning my film. This particular camera has a sensor shift high res feature and even though I find it doesn't give any more detail in my scans, I use it anyway because it does make the grain structure appear a little bit finer. It causes things to take longer but it seems like a good payoff. So when I'm ready to scan I'm going to use the touch screen to avoid shaking the camera. Just a very light touch starts my first scan. The fact that I shifted this a little doesn't really cause any harm because all of this stuff stays in alignment. I want to point out the thing about the lens hood is that the lens hood is a simple way of solving all of the problems of getting good scans. Keeping the camera and film in parallel alignment, the lens hood takes care of that. Blocking out any stray light, the lens hood takes care of that. Really all I have to do is move the film strip through and scan each frame until I've got them all. Now I'll mention that I got my Negatrans at a uh, camera swap meet and it cost me about $40. You uh, can also find them on eBay for usually not much more than that for the 35 millimeter size. There's also a Negatrans for 120 film but it needs a hinged cover glass to keep the film flat and that makes it harder to use for rapid scanning so I haven't tried that yet. Uh, for 35 millimeter, though, this is really pretty slick. Okay, now that I've imported my photos, got them all cropped the same way, rotated in some, and so forth, I can invoke Native Lab Pro by typing Command N. I'll check my settings. I've got a 10% buffer set, which is probably a little bit generous. And we'll go ahead and convert all the negatives so I can see how they're going to look. And there they are. I'm going to make an initial setting here by pulling my brightness down a bit. You can see it's applying to the selected image. Let's get it to where I think I'm going to like its overall look. We'll try it about here. Then I will sync my settings to all of my negatives. And then I can apply. Now if I want to do some fine tuning, I can pick an image bring it up a little larger, invoke Negative Lab Pro again, and do some tweaking on it. I want the darks to have detail in them, but I want the blacks to be pretty black. So. I'll adjust that until I'm happy. Then I can go back to my gallery view, bring up Negative Lab Pro again, sync my settings again, and now all my images should be pretty similar. The next thing I'm going to want to do is using the Negative Lab Pro metadata preset, I'm going to update my metadata. Now here's the thing that I'd like to do next that may be a little bit controversial. These uh, scans are all in the range of 130 megabytes which is kind of a lot and I don't really see any advantage to that in terms of detail so I'm going to use Negative Lab Pro's export positive copy setting And I'm going to resize the images to 
24 megapixels. Now we'll do some export. It's exporting away. Now if, for example, we compare our original scan to this 24 megapixel positive, we don't, in my opinion, see much difference in detail level. We do, however, see a dis difference if we look at one of these images in the finder you can see that image 57 the original scan file is 131 megabytes the 24 megapixel positive is 19 megabytes so that makes me feel like I don't really see any advantage in saving all of these gigantic files, so I'm just going to delete them. Shocking, huh? So now I have a nice little set of files which are positive, so if I want to do any additional messing with them in Lightroom, they'll behave like you would normally expect.